What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the second half of April and whether I think each one of these shoes are going to sit on shelves or sell out. First off, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, HP Omen Apparel. I've had an HP Omen gaming PC for the last couple months now, which I use for both gaming, streaming, and for editing. And it looks like HP Omen is actually coming out with their own line of apparel. But I'll be unboxing all this goodness later on in the video, so make sure to stay tuned. And if you would like to shop any of the HP Omen apparel featured in this video, I've linked all of it in the description below. But as you may have noticed, I'm actually doing this video a little bit earlier than usual. And the reason for that is because I'm actually flying to Tokyo and then Manila for about a week and a half. So rather than try and film this video while I was traveling, I decided to knock it out now and let you guys know what's coming later on in April. If you're not familiar with how the Sit or Sell series works, basically what I do is I take a look at all the sneakers releasing for the second half or first half of the month. I let you guys know what they are, when they're dropping, and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. But as I mentioned, because I'm filming this video a little bit earlier than usual, I'm going to cover some of the more notable releases that I covered in the previous video that haven't actually happened yet. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So starting things off on April 12th we've got the Air Max 1 Susan. The Air Max 1 Susan was originally supposed to release on April 9th, but then it got pushed back on the sneakers app for unknown reasons, at least to me. It's a super cool sneaker and it's based on the movie Missing Link. We've had other animated movie inspired sneakers like the Paranormans and the Box Troll Roshis, I think. And out of those shoes from an aesthetic point of view, I think this one is my favorite. If you've been following this release at all, you know that the hype has been building and people have been getting really excited about this sneaker. So for that reason, I think it's gonna sell. And then the other notable release on April 12th is the Air Jordan 1 Crimson Tint. This is another shoe I really, really want, and unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to grab it unless I decide to pay resale or something like that. But it's a great looking sneaker. I love Air Jordan 1s. The color blocking is awesome. It's kind of blocked like a bread Air Jordan 1. The shoe is made up of a very tumbled black leather that covers a majority of the sneaker. And then of course there are the crimson tint accents which are actually a lot smoother leather. If you're a fan of this pinkish hue or just Air Jordan 1s in general, this is a great shoe to go for. And based on how excited people are about this shoe, I'm sure it's gonna sell out. And then moving on to April 13th, some of the notable releases are the Air Max On Air collection. This collection includes the Air Max 98 La Mezcla, the Air Max 97 Summer of Love, the Air Max 97 Soul, the Air Max 1 Tokyo Maze, the Air Vapor Max Plus Works in Progress, and the Air Max 97 SH Kaleidoscope. As I mentioned in the previous Sit or Sell video, I think all of these colorways are awesome. I love the On Air series, but I think for me, my favorites are the SH Kaleidoscope and the Soul colorway. I really like the unique take that each designer had on each shoe, and I also love how each colorway varies so significantly. And based on the fact that everyone seems to love this collection, and it's most likely going to be relatively limited, I think these shoes are all gonna sell out. And then on April 15th, rounding off some of the notable releases from the previous video, we've got the Air Max 720 Heron Preston. This sneaker looks like a mashup of the Air Max 720's Air Unit and the Air Max 95's Upper. This Heron Preston collaboration comes in a couple different bright shades of orange, and even though I'm not a huge fan of orange or just the Air Max 720 in general, I think it's a pretty good looking sneaker, and I think that's mainly attributed to the fact that it's got the Air Max 95 upper. Based on the fact that this collaboration is between two very popular brands, and also the fact that it's probably going to be limited, means that this sneaker is most likely going to sell out. Moving on to April 16th, we've got the Nike LeBron 16 Martin. This LeBron 16 colorway is based on the very popular show Martin and comes in a primarily purple upper. It also features some orange and white accents on the laces, and if you're a fan of the show Martin, you're probably going to like this sneaker. The LeBron 16, although it is a popular basketball sneaker, it's not really that hyped up, and there haven't been too many colorways of the 16 that have really sold out. So for that reason, I don't think this colorway is going to do anything different, and I think it's going to sit on shelves. Moving on to April 18th, we've got the Air Max 98 All-Star. This Air Max 98 comes in a Charlotte Hornets colorway, presumably because that's where the All-Star game was held. And to be honest with you, it's not a bad looking shoe. It almost even has a South Beach vibe to it without some of the pink. This Air Max 98 definitely has some summer vibes to it, and if you're a fan of the Air Max 98 or a fan of Charlotte, this is definitely the sneaker for you. That being said, I don't think too many people are gonna be that excited about this sneaker, so I think this shoe is gonna sit. And then rounding off April 18th, we've got another Air Max 98 colorway, this time in black, blue, red, and white. This shoe's colorway kind of reminds me of some of the Transformer-themed Puma sneakers because of its blue and its reds. Um, I think it's an alright looking sneaker, but it's definitely not something that I'm trying to pick up. Based on what I've heard about this sneaker, I don't think it's going to be limited or really hard to get, and for an Air Max 98, it kind of has to be a popular colorway for it to sell out. So for that reason, I think it's going to sit. 
Moving on to April 19th, we've got the LeBron 16 Minneapolis Lakers. This LeBron 16 comes in a light gray upper with light blue accents throughout. This colorway was designed to pay tribute to the pre-Los Angeles Lakers who were originally based in Minneapolis. The Minneapolis Lakers 16s are a good looking sneaker and out of all the LeBron 16 colorways, might actually be one of my favorite, but not because of the history, because I just like the colorway. If you're a LeBron fan or a Lakers fan or just want another pair of LeBron 16s, this is a great way to go. However, I don't think it's going to be limited and I don't think it's going to sell out. Following that up, we've got the Nike Zoom Alpha in Lucid Green and Habanero Red. This Nike Zoom Alpha definitely seems like it has a Gucci theme to it, which I'm sure will draw a lot of people to the sneaker. Recently, retro runners have become increasingly popular, so that makes sense why Nike is bringing out the Nike Zoom Alpha now. Although this sneaker is releasing in a colorway that I'm sure a lot of people like, and it's also a retro runner, which like I said, is pretty popular right now, I still don't think there's enough hype to really make this sneaker move, so for that reason, I think it's gonna sit. Next up, we have the second colorway of the Nike Adapt BB called the Future of the Game. This self-lacing Nike Adapt BB comes in a primarily gray colorway, which honestly doesn't look that different from the original. I have a pair of the original Nike Adapt BBs, and I've got to say, I'm a sucker for that self-lacing technology. I think it's so cool. Functionally, this sneaker is exactly the same as you probably expected. It still works with your phone, it still tightens around your foot whenever you put your foot into the shoe, and it's still a crazy sneaker overall. If you missed out on the initial colorway of the Nike Adapt BB, and you want to try this self-lacing technology for yourself, this is a great way to go. Because the first colorway of the Nike Adapt BB was limited, not everyone who wanted to grab a pair was given the opportunity. So for that reason, I think everyone else who wasn't able to grab a pair is going to want to grab this pair. So for that reason, I think it's going to sell. Also dropping on the 19th, we've got the Air Jordan 11 Low in Navy Snakeskin. This Air Jordan 11 Low isn't really anything special in my opinion, even though it's got a snakeskin upper. Obviously it's not a real snakeskin upper, it's sort of a pressed leather or plastic that's used instead of the patent leather. But even though the materials aren't great, I've got to say the colorway is somewhat appealing. The Air Jordan and the Air Jordan 11 Lows have always been popular silhouettes, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are very excited about this sneaker. I'm not really one of those people, and I probably won't be picking this shoe up, but that doesn't mean I don't think it looks good. But what I think really doesn't matter and I still think there's a lot of other people who are really excited about this shoe so for that reason I'm gonna give it a sell. And then rounding off the 19th, we've got two different colorways of the Sakai Nike Blazer Mid. This is another one of those shoes that I've covered in Sitter Cells a couple different times before, and that's because it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. This Sakai collaboration takes the silhouette from the Nike Blazer and mixes in some dunk accents. It's a great looking shoe, it's a crazy looking shoe for sure, but it's a shoe that I'm really excited about. The Sakai Nike Blazer Mid comes in both a black, white, and blue, and also a yellow, red, and blue colorway. Whether April 19th actually ends up being the final release date or or whether it gets pushed back again, I have no idea, but it's a shoe that I really wanna grab and I know a lot of people are excited about. Like I said in all the other videos where I featured this shoe, I definitely think it's gonna sell. Moving on to April 20th, we've got a return of a classic, the Nike Zoom GP. This basketball sneaker originally released in 1999 and is now retroing 20 years later. It's definitely a bulky sneaker and I think it's fair to say that that aesthetic is coming back. This time around, the retro is coming in a pretty plain white and black colorway. If you love the retro 90s basketball sneaker look or you're a Gary Payton fan, this is a great shoe for you. That being said, I don't think it's that popular of a shoe and I don't think anyone is really waiting for it, so for that reason, I'm gonna give it a sit. And then rounding off 420, we've got the Air Trainer 3 in the Medicine Ball colorway. Over the last year or two years, we've had a lot of sneakers come out with the Medicine Ball colorway inspiration. You had the Don C's and most recently the LeBron 16s, and I'm sure there are some other shoes out there that were heavily inspired by this look. Even though there are a lot of people out there who are nostalgic about this silhouette, I don't know if enough people are really that excited about it, so for that reason, I'm gonna give it a sit. Moving on to April 26th, we've got the Ambush Nike Air Max 180 High. This shoe is a collaboration between Ambush and Nike and comes in a very sock-like all-white construction. The Ambush Air Max 180 comes with a large Nike swoosh on the toe that falls over onto the midfoot, and overall it's got a very futuristic and interesting look. It's definitely not my thing, even though I like minimal sneakers, but it's not a bad look and I think people will be excited for it. But when it comes to whether this sneaker is going to sit or sell, I'm not 100% sure. On one hand, it is a collaboration and some people do seem excited for it. On the other hand, it's not that hyped. So I guess I'm gonna have to go off the response that I've seen online and it's not been incredible. So for that reason, I think it's gonna sit. 
Then after that, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 12 in black and gold. This is another shoe that I mentioned in the previous Sit or Sell video, and it's definitely a sneaker that I do think looks pretty good. It features a black upper made up of a couple different textures, and of course, it's also got that gold accent on the midfoot. I actually think this is a great looking shoe, and if it released in full family sizing or even just men's sizing, I think it might have sold out. But because of the limited sizing, even though it's a great looking colorway, I just don't think it's gonna sell out. And then rounding off the 26th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 in black and white. From a distance, this Air Jordan 1 looks just like the previous black and white Air Jordan 1. But when you get close to it, you realize that the black panels are not regular leather, they're actually fur, which definitely is not my thing. From a distance, I think this shoe is a great looking sneaker, and I really wish we would get a retro of the black and white Air Jordan 1s because I love that colorway but this shoe is definitely not it for me. Just like the other Air Jordan release on the 26th, I think the limited market will stunt the sales of this shoe, and I definitely don't think the fur is gonna help that either, so for that reason, I think I'm gonna give it a sit. But before we get any farther into the video, let's unbox some of this brand new uh, HP gear. So here's the box, it just came in the mail yesterday or the day before. Um, I haven't actually seen any of this stuff in person before but I saw it online and it's really good looking stuff, so I'm really excited to check it out. Okay, let's start things off with the HP Courier Men's Short Sleeve Tee. Let's see it, I'm excited. Whew, that's some really nice material. So this is the HP Omen Men's Courier Tee Short Sleeve. It's got this really nice sort of diagonal linear pattern on it, and that comes in sort of a matte black. Of course, you've got the Omen logo right there, and then you've got Omen Supply written right down there at the bottom. You could actually rock these with a nice pair of Yeezys or something like that. I think it would match really nice. You also don't have any separate tags, too, so it's not gonna be rubbing against the back of your neck, which I always have problems with. Hold up, I'm gonna throw it on over my shirt that I'm wearing right now. Ugh. Next, we've got the HP Omen Meridian Men's Long Sleeve Tee. This is obviously a black long sleeve tee, and you've got a similar matte black design with the Omen logo printed on the chest. And actually, something I really like about this is that the design actually fades into the t-shirt, which I think is such a cool touch. Again, the material on this is really nice, and you've also got an Omen logo right there on the left sleeve. Next, we've got the HP Omen Ascendant Men's Zip Hoodie. One thing I really like about this HP apparel is that it comes with this sort of like cardboard wrap around it to keep it all together. So with spring coming, you don't really need coats anymore, you don't really need jackets, but you could use a nice hoodie, and this is like a really nice weight. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. On the front, you've got that sort of gray diamond shape that says uh, Omen Gaming Apparel 18 Performance Spec. You've got the Omen logo on the side of the hood right there. You've also got Omen written down the side of the sleeve. You've also got these really interesting like red dipped drawstrings right there. That's nice. Let's zip this guy up. I like it a lot. Next up, we've got the HP Omen Offset Men's Short Sleeve Tee in gray. I think this is sick. It's such a simple design. It says Omen in this uh, rectangle and it says equipment underneath it. You've got the Omen logo on the back. This one might be my favorite tee. I think this one's sick. Um, I'm not sure exactly what kind of tees they use for this. West Fit. West Fit is the tee. Next up, we've got the HP Omen Ascendant Women's Zip Hoodie. I did get some hoodies for my uh, fiance as well. So this is the Women's Ascendant Hoodie. It's the same exact one that I'm wearing right now, except it comes in sort of a, a darker heathered gray. I actually really like this color a lot. It also comes with the red Omen logo on the bottom left-hand side of the hoodie. I mean, overall, this hoodie's sick. It's also mad comfy. Ooh, this is the one that I wanted. This one is the same shirt as the gray one that we saw, except this time around, in black. It's got that really simple Omen logo in the white rectangle with the equipment text underneath. Oh man, this one's, this one's my favorite, I take it back. The gray one was dope, new favorite, no question. What else we got? This one is another one for my fiance, I already pulled it out of the bag. It's the uh, HP Omen Voodoo Women's Pullover Hoodie. Some of the standout details though, are this sort of matte printing on the sleeve, this matte black printing on the sleeve that says Omen Gaming Apparel 18 Performance Spec. On the back you've got a little bit of a little Omen hit right there, kinda off center, kinda on the shoulder. And then on the front, the main detail, actually isn't printed. It's sort of stamped. I can't really get it in the light. Let's see. There we go. And then the final thing, we've got, oh, the same exact hoodie in men's. Awesome. So here it is, the Voodoo Pullover Hoodie. Same details, same matte on the right sleeve, same Omen branding right there in the back. Let's, uh, let's throw this on top of the hoodie I'm wearing right now. Is this excessive? Whatever. This is ridiculous. It actually fits pretty well. There you've got the uh, the Omen logo right there on the chest. I actually really like this. It feels great too. Even though it's on top of some other hoodies, it does feel really great. It's soft. It's actually got these little thumb holes. If you're into those, they've got them. Oh, what? There's a zipper inside the middle pocket. 
You can keep your wallet in there if you want, I guess. That's awesome. But huge thank you to HP and the HP Omen team for sending this stuff over. This stuff is all really nicely made and looks pretty nice too. Like I said, I also have an HP Omen gaming PC, which I use to game and of course edit a little bit or a lot of bit. I, I don't know which one I do more on that PC, but it's perfect for everything. If you would like to shop the HP looks shown in this video, I've got links to everything that I showed off in the description below. But now I think I'm gonna take all these layers off because I am incredibly hot. Then moving on to April 27th, we've got the Air Jordan 13 cap and gown. Like last year's Air Jordan 11 cap and gown, this shoe comes in an all black look with patent leather detailing. The whole idea behind this colorway is to be a more formal version of the Air Jordan 13, or at least that's what they were saying for the Air Jordan 11. In my opinion, this colorway definitely worked better on the Air Jordan 11 because that shoe already sort of lends itself to being a more formal version of an Air Jordan. And I don't think this Air Jordan 13 looks that great with patent leather, so this is probably a sneaker that I'm going to pass. But like the previous cap and gown release, I think this shoe will be limited and it will be hard to get. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a sell. Also dropping on the 27th is the Nike Air Fear of God Moccasin. The Air Fear of God Moccasin is releasing in the pure platinum colorway, which is very similar to the light bone colorway first seen on the Air Fear of God once. The Fear of God Moccasin is part of the Summer Fear of God Nike collection and features a pull string in the back and a strap across the midfoot. When a lot of people first saw this shoe, they definitely weren't a fan of it. And I've got to say, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it yet because I feel like the ankle area is still very, very wide. The upper of the moccasin is pretty plain and minimal. The only real color change is the Nike swoosh in black. The midsole remains pretty much the same as all the other Fear of God sneakers with some slight adjustments, and of course it still features that signature rectangular air unit cut out in the heel in translucent blue. The Nike Air Fear of God moccasin might not be everyone's favorite Fear of God sneaker to drop, but a lot of people are still excited about it, and because of that Fear of God collaboration name, this shoe is definitely going to sell. And then, rounding off the 27th, we've got the Nike Air Fear of God 180. As you could probably tell, the inspiration behind this mid-top sneaker was the Nike Air Raid. The overlapping straps form sort of an X shape on the midfoot and definitely give this sneaker a unique look. The colorway releasing on the 27th is the light bone colorway, which also matches the pure platinum moccasin dropping on the same day. It's a good looking shoe, and out of the two Fear of Gods dropping on that day, it's definitely my favorite. Besides the straps on the midfoot, the Fear of God 180 also features a black Nike swoosh and of course that signature Nike Air unit. As with the moccasin, the 180 will definitely be limited and definitely be hard to get because of the hype. So of course, the Nike Air Fear of God 180 is definitely going to sell out. And then finally, rounding off the month on April 30th, we've got the LeBron 16 Remix. This LeBron 16 is kind of like a LeBron watch shoe, except in a different colorway. It comes primarily in black, white, and red, and overall, it's not a bad looking shoe. The sneaker features patent leather paneling and a strap across the midfoot to mimic previous LeBrons, and in my opinion, it's not a great mashup of old and new. I just don't think it works that well. That being said though, I'm not a huge LeBron fan, and I'm not really the target audience for this sneaker. As for whether I think the shoe is going to sell out or not, I think it could possibly sell out on the sneakers app, maybe, but it probably won't sell out in store. So overall, I'm going to have to give it a sit. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on these releases and which one of these shoes you're looking forward to most. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. Once again, huge thank you to HP Omen for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to check out any of the styles that I featured in the video, make sure to click the links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.